Chi Hua Chen. A couple of weeks ago, I interviewed a, a, a Russian American author called mm -hmm. Gary Steingarten, uh, who's quite critical of the future in which machines know more about us than we know ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, Reid Hoffman has talked about uh, Web 3.0 as this world of uh, more and more personalized information. Mm -hmm. Steingart talked about this world, a place he goes as a writer, as a science fiction writer, as uh, William Gibson land. Now, I think I've had a lot of very smart people on my show, but I don't think I've had anyone who sees William Gibson land as clearly as you do in the way you lay it out. You're a VC at a top firm, so obviously you need to do that uh, to remain competitive, to stay ahead of everyone else. It seems like your vision, it all rests around mobile technology and personal data. Is this a world that scares you at all? No, because the core tenets of that world have to be privacy and control. So personal data needs to always remain private. I think the companies that have screwed that up have paid the price. In addition, Give me an example. Well, I think that anybody who's Facebook? had any sort of a data breach, uh, the credit card processing companies that for whatever reason have had data breaches and those credit card information, uh, Sony with the uh, Sony PlayStation Yeah, yeah but it's not, that, that's not really their fault, is it? Well, but privacy, as, as far as the consumer's yeah. concerned, whose fault is it? As far as the consumer's concerned, I gave you, company X, my credit card information, my home address, and my social security number, and you let that information get out into the wild. So privacy, first tenant. Second, so privacy control. becomes privacy and security. Privacy of personal information becomes a fundamental requirement. A fundamental, importance, a fundamental requirement for this world to actually come to pass and for the services to be useful to consumers. I had uh, uh, Vic Gunat, uh, Gundutra yeah. and Bradley Horowitz of Google Plus on uh -huh. the show a couple of weeks ago, and they stressed privacy and mm -hmm. I think implicitly compared Google Plus to Facebook. Do you think they're right to do that then? Yeah, I think Google Plus provides a set of tools for people from the get-go to build control, not privacy, but control into the way that their information is shared. Now, the control, I think, is that second tenet, which is that the user needs to have precise control over how that information is being used. It's fine that the credit card company or that Amazon has my home address. Totally comfortable with that. I'm buying products from them. It is not okay for Amazon to then go and sell that information to 16 other companies, and that's control. Privacy, they've, they, the, the, privacy and security means that information cannot be taken without my permission. Control means that I know exactly where that information is going, and I'm giving permission. So I think what Google Plus is doing is Google Plus had the benefit of starting with zero users, and every incremental new user is presented with a process by which they can create the circles that are going to receive their information. It's hard to do that when you have a lot of users already because that's a retroactive process. Google Plus puts it up front and as a result they give a lot more control to users around their information. A couple of months ago I had Michael Furtick of uh, Reputation.com on the show. You're uh, an investor and I think you're, yeah. you're involved very much with Reputation.com. Is this the kind of company you think that will obviously thrive in a future where privacy becomes more and more important? Absolutely, because reputation.com is the company which is the service provider to users around solving this problem. Their role in our lives is to go out and look for all of the private information of mine or of their customers, which has been disclosed on the open internet, notify me and ensure that information where it is belongs there and I've given permission based upon my control of that information. You're also an investor, Kleiner, in Clout, and I know that you're involved as a, as a, as a Kleiner person with Clout. Mm -hmm. Is there a contradiction between supporting a, a privacy network, essentially like reputation.com, and a public service like Clout that publicly evaluates our online reputations, whether we like it or not? Uh, not at all, because Clout evaluates information that you are publicly disclosing. So your Twitter, do you have a public Twitter account or a private Twitter account? Uh, public, I think. Public, okay. So Clout evaluates all of your public Twitter information and Clout evaluates your LinkedIn information if you authenticate LinkedIn in and your Facebook and Foursquare information if and only if you authenticate those services in. So Clout is measuring public information 
and public influence in a way that is only information that you've disclosed to that point of control. You've chosen to put that information out there. Clout measures it and can, uh, can essentially create a gauge of your influence in the social web. What do you believe the significance of clout will be in the future? Oh, I think clout is going to be the, uh, one of the top three marketing channels for every single new product and service. If I'm a brand marketer or if I am the product marketer for a particular company, product, or service, every single time I launch a new product or service, I want to make sure that the top 100 or top 1,000 influencers in that category know about my product, try my product, and are favorable to it. Why bother exposing my product to two million people when I can expose it to just a few hundred people who are highly influential? Spotify, for example. Spotify launched in the US last week. And you're, Cloud, a, you're, a, you're an investor. We're also an investor in Spotify. Uh, Clout was one of their launch partners. Clout identified the 100,000 most influential people in the US about music. Not millions, not tens of millions of banners, ads, not television commercials, but only 100,000 people, which is a tiny number of people when you put it in perspective. Clout drove more new customers for Spotify than any other marketing channel because they picked the right 100,000 to talk to. How come you've got all the sexiest companies at Kleiner? You've got Twitter, we, you've got... We've got a no, lot you of, personally. We've got a lot of Do you all grab companies. them or you just happen to get no, all the good we're, ones? we're a team and we all work with a lot of interesting companies. You got any bad ones? Nope. I love all my children. Thank you very much. Thank you.